this next wave is here. And we have one of our Founder two, Founders Club 2.0s joining us live from New York. I'm so excited for all of you to hear from Heather Reed. So Heather, thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm always blown away by your energy and your dedication to this journey. Will you share with us a little bit about what this has been like for you? We just heard what it was like in the very beginning. Now, fast forward today, when a very similar opportunity is available, what has this been like for you? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you so much for being here. I'm so honored. I don't take this lightly at all. And I want to take a second to thank all of the original founders. I hope everybody realizes Founders 2.0 opportunity didn't just come out of thin air. It had to take generous um, sacrifice from our original founders to give um, 200 more people the opportunity that they had. So I am just so grateful for that. So I just want to make sure that's so clear. So yeah, oh my gosh, as you know, as I sat down and tried to think of the most important thing I could share about my story in just a short time, it really all boiled down to vision for me. And it wasn't just my vision for founders. So futuristic is my number two strength. So big vision is something I've had since way before doTERRA. I actually, I envision my future so clearly and so often that sometimes I actually forget that I'm only 26. Like I actually forget. I, when I was telling you, Sarah, read my story, I caught myself saying way back in college. And I was like, okay, that was like five years ago, relax. <laughs> so, but that's, I just like live in that place and I always see myself in the future and and with these successes so um so let me take you away on back five or six years ago to my very humble beginnings um in college and i want to do that because i think it's important to hear where leaders started because i think it's easy to look at them in all their glory and in celebration and think they had some sort of advantage that you didn't and i also think my story helps dispel some stereotypes about millennials. So I do consider myself pretty countercultural in the way that I live, but there are so many more people like me and this generation is on the hunt for truth and something greater and they're on fire. So please don't discount this demographic um, if you are not one of them, because you know if you feel like you can't connect with them, just try to understand them better because trust me, they're on fire. So anyways, back to my story. So I'm in college. I very randomly stumbled upon doTERRA the summer before my senior year. Um, I quickly adopted the doTERRA lifestyle, and I saw um, a pretty crazy 180 in my health. And my friends saw it, too, when I went back to school for that fall semester of my senior year. So I'm naturally telling everyone about my experience, and they're so intrigued, and they wanted in just on the product. Um, I actually wasn't trying to do a business at all, but one thing led to another as it goes. And all of a sudden I felt well, not just to do this as a business, but what one day I knew would be a career. And so I don't recommend this kind of leap of faith unless you hear it straight from God, but I ended up stopping dead in my tracks um, applying to grad school. So I finished out uh, my undergrad that year in painting and photography but something just wasn't sitting right with me. I was going to go get a master's in art therapy. And all I really wanted to do was use my talents to help people. I really didn't care about the title. And I just couldn't bear taking on more student loan debt when I wanted to go in the opposite direction. I wanted, I wanted debt freedom. I didn't even know what I owed to who at that point. And I'm really thankful for listening to God's voice in that because I went on to become debt free in a year. Um, but aside from helping people and financial freedom, also my vision was I wanted to one day be a mom. I've had that vision my whole life. Um, and so single as ever, I saw doTERRA as an opportunity to be, um, to, to be both, to help people and one day um, be present and home with my kids. So another thing, um, that year I actually dedicated all my studio artwork to uh, the anti-human trafficking movement. So when I heard about um, doTERRA's involvement in that mission and the heart behind the company, I knew that was straight from God. He gave me the go ahead to take that leap of faith. So I started teaching classes in my little college apartment, living rooms full of incense. And I even booked out some rooms on college campus and taught open door classes 
where all sorts of people came, including a group of girls that came just to make fun of it. And I promise you, if I didn't have big vision, I never would have made it through even that one class, truly. So, and in fact, it actually grew my confidence because I had to constantly dig inside to remember the big picture and know who I'm here for and who I'm not. And um, so that, that's why I went on to teach. I taught in-person classes for a few years as I hit silver um, shortly after I graduated, actually, and then gold. And, you know, my vision throughout this whole time was consistent, but doTERRA saw me through many stages of life. So the confused college kid to the circus act of side jobs. Um, I was the live-in nanny. And then, you know, onto being engaged, married, and, and now with a baby. And I know that kind of sounds like too many life events to happen in five years, but that's because my son, Luca, was actually a honeymoon baby. So that's what happens when you take a month-long honeymoon, just so you know. But that actually, becoming a mom, that is what leads me to actually the start of our founder's journey. So my husband, Matt, and I got married um, in July of 2019. We kind of decided that would mark when I chose to drop all my side, gig side gigs and focus solely on doTERRA. Now, to amplify that focus, like I said, I returned home from our honeymoon, not just as a brand new wife, but as a soon-to-be mom. So I had nine months to find a flow that would carry me and my family and my business into motherhood smoothly. So I'm heading into my second and third trimester, and you know, time's kind of running out. I was never going to not be a mom again. Like You can't go backwards. So I was like, okay, this time is crucial. Um, so I was, I needed systems in place that I could maximize my time as a mom and still have a thriving business. And also maximizer is my number one as well. So these worked very, very well for me for my pursuit of founders. So, so it was about January of last year, 2020, before all the craziness happened and before founders was even a thing, I breathed this new fresh feel into my team with collaboration and simplicity. Can't stress that enough. So we started hosting weekly online classes that we all could invite to. We took turns teaching those classes so that we could share the responsibility. And I even, another thing I did to, um, to maximize my time was I grouped up some of my mentor calls where I paired people together that were in similar places in life and in business. So um, it helped me. I found I was saying the same thing to several different leaders. And I was like, wait let's bring you guys together. Um, so I'm just repeating myself. And so it maximized my time, but it also helped build team unity. And it was really kind of beautiful. So um, another thing we did was we all really started maximizing social media more than we had before. So um, nothing that fancy. We all just kind of collectively decided it was the way and it was, um, we already were showing up there, but we just said with even more intention, we were going to show up more authentically and even more consistently than before. And most of that was done via um, Instagram. With that, um, we all got really used to being in front of like cameras and stuff, basically talking to ourselves all the time. And so um, a lot of us began utilizing um, video and audio recordings. So we found same deal kind of as the mentor calls. We were, we were being asked similar questions. Um, all the time or like, uh, you know, can you help me or like help me understand wholesale versus retail or, or questions like that that come up. So we started recording videos so that we could just send it and be like, oh yeah, check out this video I made answering that. Um, so like the best thing I ever did was I made a, an LRP video um, explaining more in depth of LRP and like the mechanics of it. And um, I threw it up on YouTube and um, I can't tell you how many people I got in LRP with that. Um, this is something I, I feel like some people need to hear because it can feel like a fail. Like you can feel like a failure when people, they get the oils and all this stuff. And then you just can't reach back up with them for a wellness consult. It's ideal. You guys, like I never, I always offer that. I always offer that, but I'll just be honest. This world is very fast paced and independent and people want to just go where they want for information. And so if you can't, if that's that ideal situation doesn't pan out for you, um, you need to have kind of a backup plan. And so I, you know, I had a great welcome email I crafted that basically went over everything I would go through in a wellness consult. And there was the LRP video and it worked. And I'm not saying like, don't give up your wellness consults. Don't, don't do that. But I'm saying ha have other plans and be flexible for different kinds of people and the way that they want to connect. And speaking of connecting, I think 
um, if you, you know, if that does happen, you absolutely still need to replace those connection points. So even if I did get someone on, LR, on LRP with that video, I stayed connected with them in other avenues. And one of those uh, things was something my whole team started doing was we started responding to messages um, and DMs using voice messaging. So it saved us time, right? We had a kid in one hand and just our thumb voicing and another, but um, it also actually grew connection with even just customers. Um, they felt like really, like you could express your heart and tone so much better um, through voice and, and people like feel kind of special when you send them a little voice note. So, okay, then it comes time to have my son, Luca, of just a year, just almost a year ago. So I felt really confident in these systems and the community that we built so that I could take a couple weeks off. Um, but not before entering Diamond Club enrollments from the hospital bed, barely two hours after giving birth. Shout out Diamond Clubbers, that's the real deal. Um, but in those few weeks after, my team wasn't left hanging for me to come back. They had the schedule, they had the tools to keep rolling. We have these the simple systems in place. And again, that, that great team culture, you know, that was so strong at that point that instead of mentoring with me while I was taking a couple weeks, they would tag up with each other sometimes. And even my upline took over some of my mentoring. So collaboration was just huge. And the evidence of all this being a success is that in the same month, I returned home from the hospital with a newborn. Our team had platinum for the first time. And so I tell you all, all these details because this was our foundation for founders. These were literally the things and the principles that we followed the whole time. So, I mean, God used Luca to prepare me to lay the groundwork for founders, and I had no idea. And so I encourage you to lean into those nudges because you don't even know. I mean, I just wanted to keep my business sustainable and moving forward, but little did I know. So don't ignore those, those little God nudges. But, um, but I love sharing that the avenue was through my child because... Of, of, because of where my vision started it had to do with my kids. And I think it's my future kids. And so I think it's so cool that that directly came to fruition. And this is just the start of it. And, and also throughout my pregnancy, I was so shocked at some of the negativity I received. Like, oh, you just wait or say goodbye to freedom. Oh, you'll never sleep again. Or it's all downhill from here. And I, I heard that enough getting married, you know? So, um, and I don't think people were ill-intended, but wow, if you, I mean, once again, if you're not rooted in your vision, that'll rock you. So I really had to stay clear even through my pregnancy. Like, can I do this? Like, am I crazy to think that I could have things like do it, be, be both? Um, and, and so something people always ask me since hitting the founders was, like, ask me how I did it with a kid. But I think the better question is, how can you do it for your kids and with your kids? I was talking to Keely Martinez at the Diamond Retreat, and she mentioned how with every kid she had, she rank advanced. And I was like, hmm, well, maybe I'll just pop them on out till presidential. Can we add that into pipes? <laughs> but really, I mean, how countercultural is that, that you can be a mom and successful in business? I think that's a really damaging message that is out there for my generation that you have to choose. It's either mom or career. And then um, some kind of stereotype that comes along with whatever you choose. Um, but so I just love that both can be done and in a healthy, great way. So, so again, that's a big deal to me because that was part of my vision. That's where I started. And I want you to realize something with this. My 2020 story is a lot different than a lot of people's. Yesterday, we heard people share some tragic stories of loss of life. But for me, I gave life. So I want you to notice that in either case, that could have been an excuse to shrink and hide and play small and forget about your vision. And I'm not saying don't take time and be in and feel those moments. And this doesn't even have to be a conversation of life or death. But whatever the thing is for you, good or bad, you have to actively decide what you're going to do with it. You need to ask God where he wants you to show up because he is the maker of beauty from ashes and he's never going to let your pain nor your blessings be in vain. So that's, that's when Founders 2.0 was announced. This is where, this is where we were at. And that was the very next month after hitting platinum. It's announced. I barely read the first sentence. I had no idea of the criteria or the requirements, but I knew it was for me. It felt like a gift handed me 
handed to me straight from God. And I had no choice but to humbly accept it. Like imagine handing somebody a delicate gift that you personally handcrafted for them. And, and they said, Oh, Oh, Oh no, that's, Oh my gosh, that's too special. And Oh, that's so fragile. I'm, I'm afraid of breaking it. You'd be so hurt that they declined what you took all this time to make for them specifically. And that's how I felt with founders. I, it was such a strong conviction that I felt like by not going for it, I would be deliberately disobeying God. So trembling and shaking, literally, literally trembling, I said, okay, God, I have no idea how this is going to happen, but thank you for this gift and let me use it for your will. So Matt and I sat down and had so many long conversations for hours about how we felt called in this and that it was so clearly one of the vehicles for our long-term vision. It was, for us, it was never about the title or the actual position. It was always about a doorway to our future. It, it was the catalyst to how the call over our lives would just start to, to come to fruition. It was the avenue where we would grow God's kingdom first by having the freedom to focus on and expand our family, then by helping others find healing financially, physically, spiritually, all while in the background, we grow a financial legacy to build other impactful and empowering businesses to leave abundance behind for our future generations. Do you see how clear that is? You have to have that. There's so many fine details and layers beyond that vision, but the point is we never thought, oh, wow. Oh my gosh, that's kind of crazy. An annual check, huh? Maybe we could retire really young. Let's let's give it a go. Like that was never it. We immediately thought, one, how rare of an opportunity this was, but two, do you know what that added additional income could do if we use it right? I mean, save it, invest it, build new things with it, give it away, all in the name of God and gratitude. Are you kidding me? You guys, it's not even about the exact dollar amount. It's about the power it can have in the right hands. So that's where we started with founders and that's what carried us through. It was our vision and then the decision to chase after it. So if you don't have that crystal clear vision, you need to start there. It's just like the oils. We don't just jump into the business, right? We lead by example and personal experience because we know firsthand that what we have is powerful and we believe in it wholeheartedly. Find that kind of confidence in your long-term vision and then move forward. And also, I think vision goes deeper than your why. And a lot of us, I think everybody in doTERRA has a why. I truly believe that. But I think we can go even deeper because your why can, that can be a very short term in the moment thing. But vision automatically assumes the future. So again, like with your oils, if you put peppermint on your temples, you can easily explain the why in the moment to ease some kind of discomfort. But the vision of why you're using oils is much bigger. It's to live chemical free. Um, free of dependency, to be empowered, take ownership over your being and take care of your fam family well. So we had our, uh, we realized how founders would play into our vision. The next step for us was sharing it. You can't keep it to yourself. You have to speak life over it. So we immediately shared it with our closest friends and family. We texted them and um, told them kind of what was going on. They had no idea what we were talking about fully, but we asked them if they would stand with us in prayer over the next six months and be prayer warriors with us. And of course they did. And that was a huge, like making prayer and God the center was a huge piece of our success. So even if you're halfway to founders, go back and do that. If you skip that step of rallying your people, your team as well, but I, even people who, you know, just close friends and family that aren't even really involved in your doTERRA business, it plays a huge role. So, you know, Matt and I didn't go one single day, not one, not one day without praying about founders and over every person on our team that was involved by name and in all the people on our team going for it themselves too, not one day. And, and also now that we've hit it, by the way, I've, I've cleaned off my whiteboard of things and I've, I put everybody on my team, their names, um, who is going for it now. And every day we lay hands over them in that way. And, um, so, and, and when I say pray about it, like pray about it. Like, I mean, we prayed for provision. We prayed for the unexpected. That was a prayer. We prayed a lot. We prayed for X amount of volume. Um, I mean, we prayed for literally miracles. Like, I mean, God's in the details and he cares. You just need to open up the door for those miracles. So, I mean, beyond that, we continued our schedule as we did before, but this time with a newborn. And I wasn't in the place um, to get much 
like help around the house because at that stage with a newborn, I mean, you just can't delegate breastfeeding. I mean, you could, but it might get weird. So, um, so that's, but I had been preparing for that. I knew, I knew that, um, that that's, that's exactly what I had to prepare for. I knew I'd have to be a hands-on mom and want to be a hands-on mom in the beginning. Um, and so, um, I just continued to get savvy and protect and maximize my time. So, Oh my gosh, it's so hard to fit both the heart and logistics behind founders in such a short amount of time. Um, but I just want you guys to realize if you can find that strong and clear long-term vision, you will find the way. You will figure out the logistics. Nothing's going to get in your way. And you know, you're know you always going to hear about so many different methods and programs. Um, and it can be overwhelming. But when you're rooted in your vision... It doesn't need to be that way. You, you'll be very clear on which ones are for you and which ones aren't. You, we can't do it all. We can't do every program and every single thing. But um, you, you know, you'll ask yourself if it aligns with your 10, 20, 30-year vision and values. You'll decide and you'll know what you want to invest in and what kind of path you want to take. So lastly, you guys, I just want to encourage you to know we are, we're all just human. We're all on different paths with very different beginnings. And you may resonate with my story from college kids and motherhood. And um, many of you may not, but the message is still the same. So whatever your situation, get future focused. I'm still in it with you guys. There is solidifying to do in my business. There are so many more people to help and we are in this together Founders Club 2.0 is not the cool kids club where the most successful people arrive and gawk at their own success. It's a club for the faithful visionaries to partner together and help each other rise. And if I can give my own personal opinion here, I believe God is using Founders Club 2.0 to put people in a position of influence. If that tugs on your heart. I hope that you run. Thank you guys so much. It's been the biggest honor to be with you today. Thank you, Heather. Wow. What an amazing story and example of that vision, right? Knowing exactly where you're going and why you're going there. I think knowing that, you know, for Heather, she has this higher power that's speaking to her. For you, whatever that looks like, know that if you're clear on where you're going, that you have the ability to get there. And I love that story. Heather, thank you so much for joining us today.